Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well and today we're going to be looking into the stock or the company called Ted Baker which some of you guys probably know this brand and I actually covered this stock on like my patrons group um, but I actually never made a video about it but I did uh, cover the stock about it must have been about two months ago I think now maybe three months ago and I actually rated this company as a sell in the patrons group when I actually did the, do this uh, review so if you want to join that group uh, the links in the description below uh, but yeah I did see a few things with this company say a couple of red flags and once again I've kind of got a few more comments popping up uh, in like videos saying can you look at Ted Baker and do a video on them so I'll try to do well I am going to do a video today uh, talk about Ted Baker and some fundamentals of the company and if it's a good opportunity to buy this stock and even for some of you guys that aren't really interested in Ted Baker um, it'll be a good video to watch because I'm going to show you a couple little investing things uh, when you're looking into a company that will really help you and spot some red flags so even if you're not interested in the company itself um, it's a good video for you guys to get a few little investing tips on from looking into a company and as always guys smash that like button let's get this video out there on the YouTube algorithm you know when you smash that like button it really does help the video get out there and we'll take a look into Ted Baker so the first thing I'm going to say is obviously we'll talk about retailer and we're talking about a a retailer on the high street and obviously that for me is a straight red flag because when I think of the industry how's the industry doing I think of uh, footfall uh, not as many people going to stores not as many people on the high street the switch to online so I just think that's a bit of a red flag the only thing that can really save this company is how is that online growth because if the online growth is fantastic then maybe it can make it as a bit more of an investable company so that's one thing that I will be definitely looking into when we get to the earnings report side but from an in industry's point of view obviously straight away I'm thinking this could be a little bit of a problem with it being a high street chain. So as of recording this video the stock's trading around about the 60p range, it's currently 66p as filming but it'll be around about the 60p uh, range when I definitely get it all edited together. So when you look at this stock chart for a year you can see that that is a big massive drop. You know we're talking about a company that was you know £8 at the start of the year or, or a year ago should I say and the, and the stock's fallen off a cliff it's down 92 percent in a year which is insane that's like a, a massive decline that's one of the biggest declines i think i've ever made a video on you can see that there's something happened here around october uh, october time uh, towards november but with this problem here we can see that there's been two things basically the founder uh, ray kelvin has had a few uh, problems with misconduct and that actually left him to leave the uh, CEO role um, but in general the company wasn't doing well beforehand financially which we'll cover in a little bit as well and also there was a bit of an inventory uh, miscalculation um, so they overstated the inventory they had on the earnings report I think it was like double the inventory um, off the top of my head and yeah that obviously isn't you can't report earnings incorrect like that that's a bit of a problem um, so you've got them two problems that were going on with the company which is uh, you know obviously sent the company absolutely down huge right now and when we drop to a five-year chart you can see this stock was actually a really expensive stock at one time we were talking about a 30 pound stock um, which is quite expensive for the U UK stock market so obviously we're down about 97% since them highs so it is a big massive decline I think this is probably one of the biggest declines that I've actually ever covered on the channel so like I said the ticker symbol is TED uh, we look at the P ratio we can see that it's a company not making profit right now market cap 123 million so we talk about quite a small market cap company as well and when we're on about these sort of prices especially when it solds off this much you know we're on a big massive downtrend but I have to say if you're a bottom picker and you're looking at this chart you know <laughs> it's trying to catch a bit of a falling knife but at the same time it has sold off that much um that it's like you know i can see why you guys are looking at it going look this this is sold off this much but we've got to make sure that it sold it off this much but it's still a good company and it's not a bad company that is the the big thing we've got to see here so we flip over to simply wall street and the valuation here is 50 cent 57 percent overvalued which is worrying for a company that's sold off to be still classed as overvalued on simply wall street is a big worry sign you know we should at least be talking it should be around about fair value i can say p ratio we look at p ratio that's saying that it's not profitable at the moment which is another worry and then we get to the earnings and the revenue and we can see that prior to um about the end of 2018 the stock was actually doing okay on the earnings front it wasn't growing huge the revenue was doing okay but it was slightly growing which isn't terrible you know it's better than it decreasing so it, we can see that it was a company that was actually doing okay um which kind of reflects the, the big drop in share price at this point and then 
we see earnings starting to shrink down we see revenue starting to shrink down and then and then we can see as well like the earnings drop off the cliff towards uh the back end of 2019 so it's always good to look at pre-covid 19 numbers and we see that the earnings were horrible uh, especially at peak time of december um, and they, they can't blame this on uh, COVID-19 because it hadn't happened yet. So that's a bit of a, a red flag, you know. But uh, And then it, I think uh, Simple Wall Street here, you know, predicts revenue to come back okay. Uh, but I think it's just a bit of a guess, really, this this revenue. And obviously, they're not uh, predicting any sort of uh, earnings growth side of it either. Uh, balance sheet wise, we can see that um, the equity has kind of increased. But at the same time, debt has get, is getting more and more. And, you know, we've now got to a point where the debt to equity ratio is over 100% which is isn't great so the balance sheet has got worse um, and I'm, I'm sure with the COVID-19 and being a high street re retailer uh, it will have probably raised capital through shares and it's probably taken on a bit more debt than what's already on here as well but 52 million cash isn't bad but I bet it's burnt through it and if it's not burnt through it it's probably raised that debt and that debt probably have increased a lot as well so the balance sheet wasn't healthy going into this and probably coming out of it will be even worse so you can see why the share price is so low because if it carries on at this sort of rate you could see this company pretty much going bankrupt within uh either the next year two years so um yeah it is in a bit of a bad state health wise as well and then we look at the insider side of it. We've got no insiders buying, which is, you know, worrying. We should have been doing uh, share raising. Then obviously we would hope some inside members would buy it, especially with the company being so cheap. If we're confident in turning the company around, we should see people buying shares. I mean, you could look at the positive and say no one sold shares. But at the same time, if you think you're going to turn it around, you'd be thinking, ah, oh, at 60p, this is easy money. We'll buy our own company shares. So that's kind of a bit of a red flag with the company being so cheap. You know, how many companies did you see buy shares in the COVID-19? A lot, and there's not one here. And then we look at the management team, because obviously we've had to have a change of management. Obviously, there's been a few uh, problems with management and... Uh, obviously inappropriate behavior and also it's been they've done a terrible job you know when you look at the that profit fall uh, in 2019 and the earnings fall uh, the revenue fall um obviously the management hasn't done good um so we've got quite a few new members here um and obviously the most important one is a ceo which is rachel osborne so i had a quick look into here uh, and how she did and previously she was at debenhams now, I don't know if you guys are quite up to date on Debenhams, but basically they went into administration, I believe, twice, uh, which is not great. And they're also closing stores down. And that was uh, when she was in that company as well. I think she was the CFO in Debenhams. Um, and yeah, that was about 2019 when she was there, uh, 2018, 2019. So she's this she's come from a company, the financial uh, officer in a company that has gone into administration twice since she's been there. Now, if you're a company in Ted Baker's situation and you've got revenue declining, profit declining, and you bring a CEO in from a company that's been in administration twice when she's been there, that's not great. You'd hope for a bit of a better CEO than that, in my opinion. Now, the, the CFO, I couldn't get too much information on him, but it seems like he's set up his own uh, company that I think designs bags. Um, it's very hard because I don't think it's a public traded company. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it seems like he's come from like a, a company he set up himself. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's not much information on uh, David Wolf Wolfie. I believe that that's how you say it. Uh, but yes, there's not much information on him. So I think they took a bit of a punt there. Uh, but yeah, Rachel Osborne, I'd be definitely worried in, especially like when you look at her history, she moves around companies so much as well. Like she's literally over there and this company right now doesn't need someone to come in and go out. It needs someone to be in there for a, a good, you know, a five year plan of how to turn this company around. Uh, and get it back to where it is. So I think from management side of side, I think it's a questionable appointment getting Rachel Osborne in as well. So when we take a look into Ted Baker's earnings report, the stores uh, obviously declined on uh, 2009. This is pre-COVID-19. Uh, there was a little bit of COVID-19 starting to creep in here, but not absolutely huge. Uh, but stores sales were down, uh, which isn't great online sales were down so that's a big red flag i said before you know you, if you're going to be a high street retailer you need to grow your online sales and uh, that's where the growth is and their online sales and were not growing uh, prior to the 25th of january which is a red flag wholesale was okay uh, and license income was down as well 
uh, on menswear that grew quite a bit. And when I think about Ted Baker, I do think menswear is where they should be growing quite a bit. Women's wear was down 3.1%. Uh, so uh, it looks like the growth does seem to be in the menswear. And um, yeah, I would generally say like, I, I mean, I don't know if this is correct, but I would say that Ted Baker is a menswear kind of brand. So that's where they should be focusing on in my opinion and originally it was a, a men's brand was Ted Breaker um, and you know the, the women's wear has been in for a while uh, but I would be definitely focusing on the men with Ted Baker. Now this is interesting because we get actually the COVID-19 breakdown and we can see this is from um, through the kind of COVID-19 period and we see the start up of COVID we see the st stars starting to drop and online sales grew 20%. Now, realistically, um, you're obviously going to get a lot more online sales because of your stars being closed, but you should have more online sales than your star growth, uh, your star growth decline. So this online sales, in my opinion, should be above 26%. And then we get into the lockdown and yeah, online sales grew, but the problem is, is that it didn't grow more than the star closures again, which is another big worrying point. And then once again, we, we had the star decline, but online sales once again didn't beat the star decline, which is worrying. You know, that online growth should have jumped with lockdown and should be beating the star decline. Now in the energy part, Ted Baker does go on to blame Brexit, which uh, is the easy way out, I always think. Um, and also it says that management did a poor job, which we've said before they did. And obviously they need the new management, but... I think there's a few risks with this new management. It's also going to be trying to um, grow its social media platforms, uh, which is probably something you need to do. But I think overall, one thing that they do need to do is build that Ted Baker brand up, you know, put that logo out there, um, make it bigger on the t-shirts. Um, um, you know, when you look at something like All Saints, Fred Perry, Gucci, a lot of them other higher luxury brands, you know, they make, you know, it's, it's a luxury brand because they're past the logo. And it's like, you know, you're paying for that logo. Whereas you look at Ted Baker stuff and either the logo's not on products or it's not big enough. Um, and, you know, you need to have a bit more of that standout logo um, that kind of, you know, when you see a Gucci, like, oh, Gucci t-shirt, or, you know, you see uh, Fred Perry, you see the Fr Fred Perry polos with the logo on and the shirts and like, yeah, obviously Fred Perry t-shirt, you know, but Ted Baker need to, in my opinion, need to be putting that brand out definitely a lot more on the products as well. That's one thing that they, in my opinion, they need to do to get a little bit more success. So overall, my opinion with Ted Baker is that it's a company that obviously is in a bit of trouble with financially, uh, debt wise, balance sheet wise, cash wise. Obviously the, the high street end of it, it's obviously not great. The online sales aren't great. I think overall the management isn't great. So for me, even in the short term, you could see this stock because it sold off so much, you know, it might go up. But for my, in my opinion, I wouldn't invest it for the long term. Uh, you know, you could invest in the short term, but it's basically a red or black scenario. You know, where do you want your money to go? 50-50 shot that it goes up. Uh, but for me, uh, as, a, as a long term hold, this is one that I would say that is probably not investable right now. And if you, even if it was to turn it around, I think you can afford to wait a year, see if the profits do creep up and then eventually go, oh look, the management are starting to turn it around. And you know, when you got a little bit of evidence there, but right now I just think that it's so far off turning around as a company that it needs a lot of work in here. Um, so for my kind of view right now is I definitely wouldn't invest in it, uh, even at these prices. And if, if you were wanting to invest in it because you believe the company will turn around, I'd at least say just give it a, a year just to see some proof of that in the financial re re reports uh, and on, on that online growth, that online growth needs to increase. Um, so for me, I would rate as not a buy right now and that's my overall opinion with Ted Baker, guys. As always, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one.